What's up? Welcome back, everyone. In this episode, I wanted to talk about how do you build uh, has and belongs to many style associations. I never actually use that association type has and belongs to many. I always use an association through what we'll call a join table. And so what I wanted to do was actually start by drawing out the um, this like database structure given this question. So I'm um, this, this user on Reddit posted, you know, they were looking for help figuring out these associations. They've got a user table that has many listings and they've got a search and a search belongs to a listing and a user and they have many listings that have searches, except a search should be able to have multiple listings. So right now a search belongs to a specific listing, but a search should be able to have multiple listings. Um, so what I then have to use has and belongs to many instead. So here we have a user and a user can have many searches. A user can also have many listings through those searches and a search can have many listings. So for context, the app allows the user to save a number of search queries. So you can save your search queries. It's gonna periodically hit some API with those queries and then save the matching listings to a database. And so a user in this case can save multiple queries. So a user is gonna have multiple queries. Those are their searches and we're gonna hit the API and it's gonna return those listings and save those to a database. And uh, a, each individual search could be related to many listings. And each of those listings is gonna be tied back to um, a specific search. So what we wanna be able to do is say current user.listings as well as search.listings. And the, they presented this sort of possible scenario where the user has many searches and then a search belongs to a user and a, a search belongs to a listing. But where this falls down is we want the search to actually have many listings. And so in this case, we need a, uh, um, a has and belongs to many relationship between search and listings. So let's draw out the tables here. The way I like to draw my tables is like a open bottom rectangle where I'll draw a line across and then I will name the table. So we're gonna have a user table and in the user table, we'll have an ID. And I like to draw a line underneath the foreign key. So that's like our table name, that's our foreign key. And then this is gonna be like any of our columns that are in the user table. The reason I keep it open-ended is you kind of never know really when you start out drawing these, how many columns you're gonna have. And then once you've really like nailed down the number of columns, you can sort of finish this thing up so that you have a, a table to look at. Um, so we're gonna start off with a user and a user is gonna have an ID. Okay, and then we also need to have another object here for a search. Okay, and the search is itself also going to have an ID. And we know that a search is going to belong to a specific user because a user is creating these searches and they're, um, they're kind of managing their searches. They might like add or delete searches, but a search isn't really gonna be shared between multiple users, at least given the context that we have. So inside the search table, we're gonna add a user ID, and this is gonna be what's called a foreign key. And we might draw a line between the foreign key in the search table, that's our foreign key, and this is our primary key in the user table. There's a couple different ways to like show where there's like the one and where there's the many. So in this case, you might do like a one to one, or you might do a one to many with a star. I've seen that before. Um, but the way that I like to do it is called crow's foot notation. It kind of looks like a crow's foot. And so I'll put a line across on the side that's gonna have one, and then I will put like a crow's, looking, a crow's foot looking thing on the other side where there's gonna be many. And this kind of like shows me that there's gonna be many rows in the search table for each user, okay? Um, and then we have somewhere around here, we're gonna have a listing. Okay, and a listing needs its own little box. And inside of there, it's gonna have an ID. Okay, so a listing has an ID. Now, a listing can be in many searches and a search can be in many listings. So we don't really have a way to represent that, right? We can't have like, well, we. one way that you might think of doing this is like, okay, let's store like the search IDs column and this is going to be like an array of one two three or something like this like maybe we have a column inside the listings table that is an array of ids and those ids are tied to um search ids so maybe like this is an id of a search right and then maybe inside the searches table we have listing ids okay and this is also an array and this is like i don't know five six seven 
and these IDs might tie back to the listing IDs. So it, this is like a really, really naive approach to trying to figure out how we're gonna associate listings and searches. But that's not actually the way that we wanna do it. Okay, so this is like one of, the, one of the ways that we want to make sure that our database is normalized is by never having columns that have sort of lists of IDs. And so the way that you approach this is you'll create a separate table called a join table. And this join table is gonna be called listing search. Okay, and the listing search table will itself have an ID. It will also have a listing ID and it will have a search ID, okay? And the listing ID is going to be one to many, and the search ID is also going to be one to many, okay? Now, this, this is a really, really common way to build what we're calling a join table. So we don't know what this is gonna be like the eBay ID or something, I don't know, what, what, whatever ends up actually being the contents of the listing or the user of the search is kind of irrelevant for building out the association. So we'll just close out our tables here. And this is the sort of the database that we want to build. This is the database structure that we want to build. Now, when we do this, there's a couple of like interesting things that I wanted to talk about that are part of this search table. So we're gonna look at this table um, and talk about how we want to make these IDs, how we want to set up these IDs. Now, technically inside of Rails, you can use a has and belongs to many association. Um, but the reason, one of the reasons why we don't want to do that is oftentimes inside of this listing search table here, you might want to add other columns like seen or like reviewed, a to ID and a from ID when you're building out a road. But then you might also have like the speed limit or the toll cost or other things that are part of that join table, right? And so in this case, we it's, it's almost always preferable to have a join table. All right, so let's take a look at how this is actually. All right, so here we're gonna, uh, I've got a Rails app already started. I'm gonna say uh, Rails G model user and this is just gonna have like a name or something. Doesn't really matter. Then we can say Rails G model search, and maybe we'll have like the query that they're gonna type in and the user references. So the search again is going to belong to a user. Then separately, we wanna say Rails G model listing. We wanna create the listing first so that when we create the search listing, it can refer back to, um, back to this listing model. We can build the references that way. So now we're gonna generate the listing and this might have a title or something like whatever the eBay listing is or the thing that someone is gonna purchase. But that's really all that it actually needs for now. And finally, we're gonna say Rails G model listing search. And this is gonna have a listing and a search. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna build this join table that represents the relationship to a listing and to a search. So if we open up these migrations, so we're creating the listing searches table here, and we're building these two uh, associations, or this is gonna build two foreign keys in the listing searches table back out to the listing table and the search table. Um, if we wanted to make it so that our, uh, we could only have one listing, like the same listing per search, and only one search per, or like, if you want to make sure that you don't have duplicate results where a listing is appearing multiple times in the same search and that same search is appearing multiple times in the same listing. Like you don't wanna have a t in the table, in this table where you might have something like listing ID is equal to one and search ID is equal to one and then you have like another column that has the same data, listing ID one, search ID one. If you wanna avoid this, what you can do is you can build a, an, um, an index that has a uniqueness constraint on the pair of those two. So add index for listing searches for the combination of listing ID and search ID, and we can make this unique true. So that is one, one additional thing that can be really helpful when you're building out um, these sort of uh, join tables. Okay, so now I think that's all we really need. So Rails DB migrate, create DB migrate. All right, so now let's talk about those associations. So if we jump, actually, I'm gonna add, um, annotate to our gem file.
because this can be really helpful for visualizing the columns that are in the table. Gem annotate. So you can say bundle exec annotate dash dash models, and that will add some comments to the top of our model. So now when we open up, for instance, this listing search model, now at the very top, we have all of the different columns. So we can take a look and see exactly what's going on here. So the, the, we have our listing search and that belongs to a listing. Now, if we go to the listing, we can say the listing has many searches. Okay, and then if we go back, we can go to um, listing search belongs to a search. And, oops, I'm sorry, this is, not list, this is not searches yet. So a listing has many listing searches. We're gonna do the like one-way associations first. Listing search, um, okay, and then we'll open up search. And here, uh, our search is gonna has many listing searches. Okay, and then we'll open up our user model over here and we'll say a user has many searches, right? Because the user, uh, or like a search, directly belongs to a user. And so a user can have many, uh, have many searches. And because a search has many listing searches, now we can say um, a user has many listing searches through searches, okay? So now we're, we're able to associate a user with listing searches through those searches that they've created. So a user is gonna be creating these searches and then we're gonna periodically fire off a query to the eBay API, which is gonna give us back a bunch of results. That's going to create listings that are, as it stands, um, going to associate, they're gonna create these join tables, the listing search tables, every time there's a listing that, that corresponds with the search. And now the user will be able to access the join object so we can see a listing search. Now, if we wanna see which listings the user has, we can say has many listings through listing searches. Okay, so we can, we can sort of chain these, uh, so these has many through associations um, pretty deep. So right now we're saying that a user has uh, many searches through those searches, it has many listing searches, and through those listing searches, it has many listings. So that's it, how we're able to get back, all the way back to the listing. So let's open up the Rails console and just play around with this for a second. So we'll create a user, user.create, and then we'll create a listing, l equals listing.create, s equals uh, search.create for user being you, and then we'll say, um, ls is listing search dot create for the listing and the search and okay so now we should have like one of each of the objects so if we say u dot searches we should get back the active record uh, collection for the search and we do so we see the one search that they have okay now if we say u dot listing searches we can see those listing searches. And again, like we can also see the query that's being fired off, right? So here when we say um, user.searches, that's doing select star from searches where searches user ID is the ID for that user. Then when we say u.listing searches, now we're seeing select star from listing searches inner join searches. So when we're going through an association, it's actually creating an inner join with that through table on listing searches dot search ID equals searches dot ID. How does it even know that? It's all by convention. It's all based on the underlying convention and we can actually change what those column names are if we wanted to by specifying the class name and the foreign key. All right, so the next thing here is we wanna do u dot listings, right? Check out that SQL query. Select star from listings, inner join listing searches on listing.id is listing searches.listing ID. Another inner join, so two inner joins here, back through searches on listing the searches that search ID, searches.id, where searches.user ID equals the user's ID. And indeed, we get back the one listing that should have been found. So that's cool. The other thing that I wanted to try was just creating one more listing search with uh, with L, with the same listing and the same search. If we do this, it should fail. And it does fail because it violates 
the um, that index, the uniqueness constraint on that index that we created earlier. All right, that is, uh, hopefully that's helpful. This is uh, how you might create a has and belongs to many using a join table in Ruby on Rails. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.